Now, there are some words that need to be said in this respect, first of all, to the leaders. I'm addressing leaders right now and those who are in training for leadership and those upon whom the Lord will place his hand in the future for future leadership. We as leaders must be, take, we must take revelation and prophecy seriously. We can't just say, oh, it's just a few strange people in the church who embarrass us in this way. They've said their little piece, so let's, let's just ignore it or, 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 or pass over it. No, we must value prophecy. We must value revelation. As leaders, we must seek God for it. And we must set up the kind of conditions in our churches and amongst the people that we lead so that people can seek God for revelation and receive revelation. And one of the ways of doing this is by affirming it publicly. So when somebody brings a revelation, we respond to it publicly. We uh, affirm it and say, God is doing something. God can take the tiniest child in the Sunday school and speak to the body of Christ if it's a word from him. Now that child doesn't become a leader overnight. That child is just heard from Jesus and passing it on. And then the body takes that and receives it. And leaders take it and then implement it. And so we need to see this. And the, lead, the role of the leaders is to take prophecies like that. And not just that one prophecy, but the flow of prophecies. This is how we do it in our churches, where, where many of the congregations are very large. And uh, so what, what we do is people write in prophetic words. And we ask them to type it and make it clear. And we ask them to clarify it and communicate it. Leave their name and their address and telephone number for accountability. And it would surprise you how often I'll come into my office and I will find stacked up on my office two or three letters and words which people have written and, you know, if they're 15,000 words long and they can't be written and they're all crazy, you know, the crazy stuff has always got to be filtered out. I'm talking about the honest, genuine people who are seeking God and, they say, and it's amazing how three or four of these on the desk at the same time are saying the same thing. And then we take that as leaders and we speak into the church and say, the Spirit has been testifying to us. This such and such and such and such. And that is a way of helping us in leadership and direction. And we haven't abdicated our leadership because somebody else has prophesied. Why? We're listening to Jesus. His voice is in the body of Christ. But it's the responsibility of the leaders to encourage that, to discern that, and to act on it, and to do it publicly and openly so it affirms people in their ability to hear from God and to, that they are part of this process of listening to God and experiencing his, his blessing. 